play any instrument for long enough, and you're gonna build some pretty strong muscle memory. And while this is a very important step to becoming proficient at any instrument, it can sometimes leave you feeling a bit stuck in old habits, you know, reaching for those same old bag of tricks. This can happen on any instrument, but I think this is where the Lumitone really thrives. You know, it lets you toss in new spices into your creative soup, allowing you to map notes in an unlimited amount of ways. Today, I wanna to talk about a keyboard layout that has been around for centuries. It's easy to catch on to, it can inspire unique melodic choices, and it will shake up that muscle memory instantly. It's time to talk about preset number two on the Lumitone, the harmonic table. Hey all, Dave back here with you. And on the last episode, we talked about the first preset that you find on the Lumitone, the Bosonquet Wilson layout, and how it takes advantage of musical isomorphism. Check out that episode if you aren't familiar with the term isomorphic. But today, we're gonna go over the second preset, the harmonic table. This is one of my personal favorites, and it too is isomorphic in a really great way. Elements of this layout have been traced back to the 18th century and have been implemented in instruments such as Honer's Harmonetta and Seethrough's Axis. Now, I find there's something about this layout that clicks pretty quickly with the brain, and it's just really comfortable to play. And since it's isomorphic, we can learn the shape of any chord and move that exact same shape anywhere on the Lumitone to play the same chord type. But let's just first start by looking at how the notes are laid out. All right, here's how it looks. This is a customized color scheme I made to my liking. So it looks a little different than the default harmonic table preset that is shipped with the Lumitone. But the note layouts and the patterns are all the exact same. I'll include the LTN file in the description for this video if this is a color scheme you think you might wanna use. But all the naturals with the exception of D are represented by these blue keys in this pattern here. Leaving the D to be represented by the yellow keys. And the sharps, with the exception of G sharp, are represented by these orange keys. Leaving the G sharp to be represented by the light rose color keys. Not only does this make everything isomorphic, but it also allows for specific common intervals to be mapped to certain axes of the Lumitone. Let me show what I'm talking about. Okay, so check it out. We have fifths ascending up this vertical axis. Major thirds ascending up the horizontal axis. Minor thirds ascending up this axis. semitones ascending up this axis. And if we follow the colored patterns, we see octaves ascend three key positions up the horizontal axis. So this makes building chords really easy and all within close proximity, which allows us to remember the shape of any given chord type very quickly. So let's see what some of those shapes look like. All right, so let's stick in the key of F for now. If you wanna find the F, we just go to the bottom left corner of our naturals pattern here. To find the major third, we go one position up the major third axis. And to find the fifth, we go one position up the fifth axis. There's your major triad shape. And easily tack on a major seventh to that by going one fifth up from your major third up the fifth axis. There's your major seven shape. If you wanted that major seven to be a dominant seven instead, just bring it back one semitone position down the semitone axis. Your shape would then look like this. It's a dominant seven shape. 
And a major nine certainly isn't far away. Go one position up the fifth axis from your fifth to find your nine. Play that with your major seven shape. Nice little major nine chord. And to do the same thing in a minor key is just as easy. Instead of going up the major third axis to find the third, we'll go up the minor third axis to find our third. And we know our fifth is here. There's a minor triad shape. And our minor seven can be found a fifth above our minor third, up the fifth axis. Here's your minor seven shape. So we've got the major seven shape the dominant seven shape, and the minor seven shape. And remember, this is fully isomorphic. So anywhere you put those chord shapes, will give you the same chord type corresponding to wherever you wanna land that root note. And while obviously this can be done with one hand on the piano as well, the close proximity of the chords combined with the isomorphic layout just frees up a whole other part of your brain that can focus on other aspects of your playing. There's just a flow to this layout that really does promote intuitive playing. You'll notice that modulating chords and using different voicings happens subconsciously a lot of the time. Like you could start by just playing a simple open five chord and just start shifting your fingers to see where it takes you. And arpeggiating chords up the octaves just feels so fluid and breezy. So I could go on and on about this layout. It's something I had always heard of, but never had the chance to mess with until I got this instrument. And I bonded with it immediately. You know, it pushed me into a new mode of writing and performing. Though I'd say it was more like a gentle and inviting nudge than a push. But within days, it was taking me down drastically different paths, you know, than I would have taken on the piano. But that is that for now. And we got a whole lot more to talk about in upcoming videos. So be sure to hit like and subscribe. Did you do it? Great. We'll see you then.